This is huge. Harry and Meghan are leaving the palace to become financially independent. <laughs> and you see, you see, this is what happens when you bring the first black woman into the royal family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She looked at Harry and she's like, you need to get a job. <laughs> you need a job. You a grown ass man. You can't still be living in your mama's house, Harry. Hey, you watching this uh, Harry and Meghan? Uh, it's been painful. They come off like such whiny bitches. I gotta tell you, man. The whole world is turning on an increasingly isolated Meghan Markle and Prince Harry over their vicious attacks on the royal family. Meghan is seen in an early episode of the couple's Netflix documentary series joking about having to curtsy to the late queen after Harry recounted the conversation he had with his wife when he first introduced her to Her Majesty. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, who now live in the U.S., sent shockwaves through the world in March 2021 when they made a number of damning allegations against the royal family during an interview with Oprah Winfrey. And following the release of their much-anticipated docu-series, several TV hosts have been filmed taking a dig at the royal couple, and we have some of the most popular ones for you. Howard Stern also has choice words. They come off like such whiny I gotta tell you, man. The first one on the line was your favorite radio and talent host, kinky-haired, one and only legendary Howard Stern. Stern recently called out Prince Harry and Meghan Markle over their new Netflix docu-series Harry and Meghan. The radio host spoke about the couple on his serious XM show and dubbed them as whiny while saying it was painful to watch their show. It's been painful. I don't and I wouldn't stay with it, but my wife wants to watch it, so, you know, we have shows we watch. But they come off like such whiny bitches. I gotta tell you, man, I just don't get it. Stern mentioned that he understands Prince Harry's disappointment with the monarchy and that he has empathy over Princess Diana's death. I get Prince Harry being pissed off at the monarchy for his mother. They treated her like shit. That Prince Charles was such a effing cunt to Lady Diana. However, he also clarified that he does not like Harry and Meghan's way of sharing their story with the world. He said, but Jesus Christ, when those two starts whining about wah, 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 and they don't like me, and she wants to be beloved in this country. But man, oh man, you know, it's just very weird to watch. The Howard Stern Show host continued, two people who keep screaming, we wanted our privacy, we wanted the press to leave us alone. And then what is their special that they put out on Netflix, showing you them and their kids and their life? He also mentioned that watching Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's documentary was similar to watching a boring version of The Kardashians. The media personality and his co-host Robin Quivers also said they feel the couple has repeatedly shared the same story about their lives using different mediums. Meanwhile, Stern said that he often thought Prince Harry would eventually end his marriage to Markle, noting, you know, I think he's eventually not gonna dick her. I'm telling you. Meghan Kelly says she's back. had enough. What a boring, uninspiring, inter Terminable waste of time. Believe it or not, this couple is still complaining. Also waiting on the debate was Mech and Kelly. Kelly has branded the new Harry and Meghan Netflix documentary insufferable and speculated the prince needs a qualified psychotherapist instead of a whiny, woke annoying wife. The talk show host was none too impressed by the Sussex's much-discussed Netflix debut, which most have reviewed as an out-of-touch wine fest that continued to propagate the tired narrative about the difficult time Harry and Meghan had performing royal duties. The serious Sam host called the docu-series three hours she'll never get back. And that was the nicest thing the former Fox News host had to say. Kelly said the documentary was largely uninspiring and ultimately an interminable waste of time. Believe it or not, this couple is still complaining, Kelly said, from the Montecito mansion, with two beautiful, perfectly healthy children, a little chicken coop and flower garden out back, matching Uggs for Meghan and her toddler, all royal titles still intact, complete with matching stationery and nearly $200 million in the bank thanks to their insatiable desire to finally tell their story. Like Oprah, and on Spotify, and to NY Magazine, and in a memoir, and, well, you get the point, said Kelly and Jest. During a 20-minute review of the show, Kelly zeroed in on what she identified as the amount of emotional baggage Harry's still carrying. It's big, she exclaimed. Good gracious, is this man insecure? He clearly hasn't worked out the trauma of his mother's premature death, she continued. Time and time again, I said to myself, this guy needed therapy. A real psychotherapist, that's what he needed. Not a whiny, woke, annoying wife, Kelly declared. The gorgeous blonde additionally took aim at what she perceived to be Megan's claim that she does not have a father, or perhaps wishes not to have one. She doesn't have a dad. What a farce, she does have a dad. He raised her and loved her and paid for her college and never asked for any of this attention, she said. 
He screwed up in dealing with the paparazzi, staging photos of himself getting ready for her wedding reportedly in exchange for money. Not good, but was it really unforgivable? One mistake after a lifetime of loving and supporting her. You know who doesn't have a dad? Me, and millions of others out there who would kill to have just one more Christmas with them, Kelly continued, further prodding the ways in which Harry and Meghan's ongoing sob stories arguably do not read quite as well as the couple may hope. Another lie. And by the way, Meghan, if you don't like me calling you a liar, just sue me and we'll go through all this in court. The Sunday Times discovered she was actually handed a 30-point dossier, studiously researched, brimming with information and contacts. Meghan later simpers that she never wore bright colours to show respect, because she's all about respect. And also voicing his opinion on the debate is the ever-controversial Piers Morgan. Morgan, a vocal critic of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, has called the series a disgusting lie. Morgan also took aim at the couple in an opinion piece published in The Sun, calling it worse than keeping up with the Kardashians. The sad truth is that Meghan and Harry are now nothing more than whiny, delusional, self-serving, money-grabbing royal Kardashians, only with less class, loyalty or brains. The controversial former Good Morning Britain host said he tried to debunk some of Prince Harry and Meghan's nauseatingly self-aggrandizing Netflix whine-a-thon. Morgan further fumed, saying, The overall message is clear, the royal family and British media are a bunch of nasty, uncaring racists who made their lives hell. But that's just a vile lie perpetrated by two people who just wanted to quit royal duty for a life of celebrity luxury in California, funded by trading off the royal status they profess to despise. These two deluded narcissists wouldn't know the truth if it slapped them round their smug little privilege chops. To date, at least 17 claims they made in the opera interview have been proven to be total rubbish, the 57-year-old added. Morgan continued, All the rest of us can do is watch in mounting horror as the Sussexes continue to do their damn medis to bring down the monarchy and irrevocably tarnish Britain's image abroad. It's a wretched, despicable situation. It won't be the first time Morgan is tearing into the life of Meghan Markle. Back in 2021, the fearless journalist took aim at the Duchess of Sussex's children's book, inspired by the relationship between Meghan, her husband, Prince Harry, and her son Archie. According to Morgan, Meghan's book was on the shortlist for the title of world's most ludicrously inappropriate book. Morgan tore the idea to shreds, saying, I laughed out loud when the news broke via her ecstatic publishers, and even louder when I read the accompanying gush-laden statements. For the TV host, the book is another act of gargantuan hypocrisy from the Duchess of Sussex, who is estranged from her own father. Lest we forget, Ms. Markle has ruthlessly disowned her father, Thomas, and refuses to have anything to do with him despite the fact they now live just 70 miles from each other, Morgan wrote at the time. Flex is great at marketing, and I think Harry and Meghan are great at marketing themselves. They've done, you know, they've, they've now earned tens and tens of millions of dollars out of uh, their story, which they've been telling, it seems to me, for years now, and, and they're very good at it. So I don't know if they had the power to tell Netflix, drop it when my brother is here, but I think they probably did have the power to tell Netflix, don't drop it when well, my brother yeah. is here. But I That's think it was smart ma marketing. They are, I mean, we're mm -hmm. talking about it yeah. because it coincided with that. Yeah. And I, you know, yeah. I just wish that every time I saw Meghan and Harry, they weren't crying and wiping away tears and they were giving me well, something this is positive. Almost and finally, the last bunch of people not feeling Meghan's vibe in the new Netflix series are The View co-hosts Anna Navarro and Joy Bahar. The co-hosts Navarro and Bahar expressed annoyance over the news that Netflix was set to release a new documentary detailing Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle's hardships while living with the British royal family. Bihar suggested that the timing of the documentary's release showed that the couple were looking for publicity, a theory Navarro and fellow co-host Alyssa Farah Griffin seemed to agree with. They expressed they couldn't care less about the film, while fellow co-hosts Sonny Hostin and Sarah Haynes insisted the couple were victims of an invasion of privacy and alleged racism from members of the royal family. Bahar noted that the timing of the release was interesting, considering Prince William and Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Wales, were visiting Boston that same week. She asked the rest of the table, so, do you make anything of this release? Do you think it was deliberate? Hostin pushed back on the idea, saying, well, I didn't realize they had that much power within Netflix that they could say, we're gonna drop it now because my brother and his, you know, his wife are coming to the States. The har then asked, well, don't you think Netflix made the decision rather than them? Griffin quickly commented, smart marketing, although Hostin dismissed the idea, they manipulated the timing as such. So, there you have it. With such a huge resistance coming from the media, will Meghan and Prince Harry manage to appease the public. Let us know in the comments below. And that's it from us today. Until next time, bye.